Across Ontario today, there are far too many students who have degrees and big debts and they're back on mom and dad's couch because they've got no job to go to. At the same time, we have a great number of jobs in the skilled trades, but nobody that's able to take them on. We think that we have to instill a bit of market discipline in, in our student financial aid system. Uh, we don't want to reward mediocrity, we want to re reward merit. Uh, and certainly what we want to move towards a system where uh, students who actually need the help get the, the help that they need. Well, that time of university, you can't get a job and you become members of the provincial parliament. However, there is a very good point being made here. And let's put up now on the screen more of the quotation, of what was said. The provincial conservative is actually saying something different now. For example, students would have to show that they're using their money to improve their education, that their marks are improving, increasing and that they're not squandering that money. Yeah, that'll be. We want a good return on our investment, which is strong students who are going to be the future job creators. Dr. Rob Leone, the, the uh, PC secondary education critic. It's interesting stuff. I, uh, I wonder. Anthony Fury joins us now from Ottawa. And look, th this is common sense. It's intelligent. We spend a fortune on subsidizing kids not to become great thinkers and, and, and people who create jobs, but to get some pointless, worthless degree. I'm sorry, guys, but in anthropology and criminology and psychology and sociology, all the things they do because they don't, don't know what else to do. And we shouldn't pay so much. If they want to do it, let them do it on their own dime. Okay, Michael, what you said makes sense. That's not really what's in this paper. Tim okay. Hudak's been releasing about, this is, I think, the 11th white paper. At first, he was really laying the groundwork for, for a back-to-basic, small government, uh, classic liberal fiscal conservative uh, philosophy. It was very nice. It's very nice to see a politician actually do that and mm. talk about core values. We don't have it anymore. This paper is his worst. It's a mishmash. Really? Of, it's a mishmash of about 100 ideas. Uh, the merit one is just kind of thrown in there. And to be honest, I think, I think in some sense what he's proposing already exists. And to the degree that it doesn't exist, what he's proposing won't work. Interesting. So all, all of this, uh, what, hysteria, flamboyance about this is a new direction in education, ain't that at all? Well, I guess it's a new direction when you look at it. He's proposing about a, a hundred different micromanagement tweaks there, which, as far as I'm concerned, that's just big government. I mean, sometimes you can say, oh, we're going to take the government away, we're going to have less government, but when you end up having to do a whole bunch of programs and studies and tweaks and top-down managements, you're, you're, you're not taking government away. Mm. You're adding it. Uh, I mean, Michael, the things that I think are completely correct is that we're just funding university more and more. Administration is bloating. There are all these crazy vice president of, of diversity and equity and, yep. and sexual health adjudicator positions that they're on the sunshine list. You can look at them. I think we got to get rid of them. There are people doing crazy degrees. There's the diversity studies, queer studies tons of uh, special religious sect studies that find you they, that interests you fine why do we have to pay for this and why should a student go into debt to pay for it and then march on the street as if we have turned them into indentured servants with mm. their debt even though they put it forward um, but look the meritocracy the meritocracy business that already exists in some form of bursaries and loans you've actually got to hit a threshold to get them and the way that it doesn't exist for for the low-income people I mean, I think we're kind of agreed that it shouldn't exist because the whole point is these are people who are struggling and the idea that they might that they might not do well in one class, they might fail a class one day, doesn't surprise me and, and we, it, we shouldn't be kicking them out of school for that. Mm. I've, we have four kids, three of them have uh, gone through or going through university and I, I know, I just know how people react when I say this, they'll be, they'll be cheering. Most of the claims put forward by student unions and left-wing politicians, I wish I could say the word, but they're complete BS, and you know that. Absolutely. You, Canadian you, Federation of Students is, is just an NDP agit problem. Well, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's rubbish. First of all, at 18, now, if you have some sort of disability or whatever, even then you probably will find work, but for the vast of a warming majority of kids at 18, they will be able to find a job for a year. It will be minimum wage. Yes, it will be tough. You can still raise enough money, earn enough money, don't party, have some fun on a weekend, but save the money, minimum wage for a year. It won't be a job that kills you. If you do construction work, you'll get way more than minimum wage. If you just work making coffee or whatever, you can then pay your tuition, which will probably be about 
I don't know, six grand a year, accommodation, you may have to live at home, go to a local university. Oh, it doesn't make it genocidal. M it Michael, you are suggesting that people should make sacrifices and that they should work, and you are a cold, heartless individual I like who to obviously doesn't understand the realities <laughs> of the 21st century. We are not supposed to ask anything of students these days. They are supposed to ask more of us and take from us. Mm. You know that. I do know that, <laughs> and it, it, you know, if it didn't, if we would just Bathing in money, OK, let it go. But I'm looking at these figures here. 1.2 million kids in university. And how many people are of the qualifying age? That's a massively high proportion. 216,000 humanities. Now, I'm fine if, if they're really clever and want to study English, OK, but you know a lot of that is just rubbish. Social and behavioural sciences, 208,000. That's generally the, the degrees that they can't do anything else. Sociology, criminology, anthropology, criminology. Health, parks, recreation and fitness. What is that? 136,000. You know, I, I've got to give you this example. Uh, one of my children is a very gifted athlete, and these friends, they're all good guys. They're all, they tend to be they're all, all very gifted at various sports. You ask them, what do you want to study if you go to university? Kinesiology. What is it? Uh, not entirely sure. There are that is a big one these days. I know a lot of people going into that. Well, how many jobs are there in kinesiology, for goodness sake? They can't be 50,000. That's what the athletes are. That's the big thing now. People try and get into the Olympics or the CFL or the NFL, and they don't. So then they say they're going to go into kinesiology because it's like, it's like commodifying and we have sports to pay. interest. We have to pay. And the percentage, 61% of uh, students' education, 61% is government. That means public tax dollars. 39% is uh, private and student. Now, the, in Ontario, I don't know about the rest of the country, but in Ontario, about a third of that is also funded on top of the... Uh, so they're not paying very much of it, and they can pay for it themselves. About 10% of them will never pay the money back anyway, and they pretend that they can never earn enough. If, look, if you want to be a doctor or want to be a lawyer, and that does cost money, but you're going to earn a lot of money as well. Otherwise, don't go... And, and here's a word we're not meant to use, elitism. Universities are meant to be for the elite. They're meant to be for the people who really excel and shine intellectually. Well, well universities are generally supposed to be sedentary activities of people reflecting on stuff, doing academic stuff, doing yeah. research. And colleges are supposed to be where you go That's to right. learn stuff. Now, about around the time I went to high school, which was only about six months ago, the guidance <laughs> counselors had this approach, and the parents and all the students, that you were a complete moron if you didn't want to apply yeah. to a university. That's right. Uh, and I thought it was a real shame. And right now, actually, if you, if you want to get electrical work done on your house, the fellows are able to charge a pretty good premium because not that many people went to colleges, went to those fields. Now we're in a weird, and I do credit Tim Hudak with acknowledging this, yeah. although I don't think it's the government's job to correct it. I think it's a, a social and a family issue. We've got people going to university for something yeah. like, like social justice studies or international relations, realizing it's useless, and then going to college for a vaguely yeah. also equally useless thing like everybody's going for graphic design now that's like every you well know, there's like everybody if you, has if that you want the plumbing repaired or if you if you want uh, something done with electronics where you won't uh, blow yourself up i advise you go to someone with a degree in kinesiology or graphic design as always a great pleasure my friend thank you so very much take care thanks